Grandma, I was watching the news and did you know that the federal government is going to run a $506 bazillion deficit this year? Well sweetie pie, I'm glad that you're finally paying attention to current events but bazillion isn't a real number. I think you mean $506 billion, that's the Congressional Budget Office's projection for this year. Yeah, I guess I can't believe that the federal government can just force feed US treasuries onto private American citizens to finance their pork belly spending habits. Well, Johnny. That isn't quite the case. US treasuries are interest bearing, virtually no risk financial assets for private citizens. They are quite a good investment. They fulfill an important role in our economy. The federal government doesn't force feed US treasuries to anyone, since they are such a good asset, a lot of people want to purchase them. Really? Who wants to buy treasuries? Well, for example, pensions and mutual funds own many US treasuries. Speaking of which, back in my day at the treasury, we perfected the system to sell US treasuries by auction. What do you mean? The Treasury sells these securities by auction? Does the US Treasury have an eBay account? Not quite honey. Treasury auctions work differently from an eBay auction. The Treasury has been using auctions since 1929 and the system has evolved a lot in the intervening years. Why? Our understanding of how auctions work has improved since then. The key thing to keep in mind is the Treasury auctions off many securities at any given time. This is called a multi-unit auction. Sounds complicated. Don't cry. Let's talk about two features of how these auctions work, non-competitive versus competitive bids, and the single price system. Wait, non-competitive bids? Are the auctions communist? No honey. Anyone can participate in treasury auctions, even you and I. There are two types of bids, non-competitive bids and competitive bids. Individuals and smaller institutions submit non-competitive bids. Okay. Non-competitive bidders are guaranteed to win the auction. They leave the auction with the amount they requested. If all non-competitive bidders get the amount of treasuries they request, why don't all bidders just submit non-competitive bids? Non-competitive bids are limited to $5 million of treasuries. Most larger financial institutions submit competitive bids because they want more than $5 million worth. Competitive bids include the amount of dress you as wanted and the lowest acceptable interest rate. That is the interest rate the government pays the holder of the treasury. Well, it's starting to make some sense. The other important feature is the single price system. All treasuries have the same interest rate which is determined by the auction from its lowest accepted competitive bid. In the past, when a bidder won their auction, they were paid the interest rate that they specified on their bid. Wait grandma. I don't understand. Can we do an example with actual numbers? Sure honey. Let's say that the treasury is auctioning off 24 billion in securities. First we look at non-competitive bids. Say lots of non-competitive bidders participated in this auction and if you add all their bids up, the total amount of non-competitive bids was 1 billion dollars. We knows that all these bidders get what they asked for, so there is $23 billion worth of treasuries left over for competitive bids. In the competitive auction, each bid includes the lowest interest rate the bidder is willing to receive. Each bid also includes the amount of treasuries they want. For example, Company 1 who stated the lowest interest rate and lowest amount gets their bid accepted. Then Company 2 gets their bid accepted. After they accept Company 1 and 2's bids, the government has $10 billion remaining. Now Company 3 get their bid accepted at an interest rate of 2.97. This continues until we reach Company Number 5. Since Company Number 5 wanted $8 billion, but there is only $3 billion worth of securities remaining, they only get awarded $3 billion. However, since Company 5 is the last company, the interest rate they requested becomes the standard interest rate for all treasuries. So Company 1 obtains a 3% interest rate. And we can't forget about our non-competitive bidders. They are also affected by the results of the competitive bidding. So everyone who bought treasuries receive the same interest rate as Company 5, which was 3%. Wow, that makes so much more sense now. But Grandma, I thought of something. 
What happens if no one wants to buy treasuries? Well, Johnny, like I mentioned, US treasuries are a no-risk, interest-bearing investment. There is no safer financial asset to have on your balance sheet, it's hard to think of a time when no one will want to buy them. But Grandma, what if? Okay, fine. Johnny, do you know what the Fed is? I've definitely heard of it, but I don't really know what it does. The Federal Reserve or the Fed is the central bank of the United States. They target interest rates and are in charge of supplying most of the US currency. They print the dollar bills in your piggy bank. Okay. To control interest rates, the Federal Reserve manages the amount of reserves held by the banks. They do this by buying and selling assets. But what do they have to do with treasury auctions? Well, you have to know that after a specified amount of time, all treasuries mature. When a given treasury matures, the holder gets the principal and the accrued interest payment. They come with many different maturities, from 1 month and 3 months to 20 years and 30 years. OK. The Fed's most common assets are US treasuries. Treasuries held by the Fed are maturing every day. The Fed needs to constantly buy new treasuries. Thus the Fed is a stable source of demand in treasury auctions. Oh wow! I get it. The treasury also uses what's called the primary dealer system. Primary dealer system? What's that? The primary dealers are large financial institutions that deal directly with the Federal Reserve Bank. To be a primary dealer, these institutions are legally bound to submit reasonable bids in every treasury auction. This way, no matter what happens, bids are always placed in the auctions. OK, but what if the primary dealers don't have enough money to buy a bunch of treasuries? Like I said, these banks deal directly with the Federal Reserve Bank. In the event a primary dealer doesn't have enough money in reserves to make a reasonable bid, the Fed will buy some of the older treasuries on the bank's books. This means the primary dealer has more reserves and fewer treasuries. Then in the auction, the primary dealers bid for new treasuries to replace the ones the Fed bought from them. Oh so even if the primary dealers don't have enough money on hand to place a reasonable bid, the Fed makes sure that they do when the auction comes around. Exactly Johnny. Oh, so does the primary dealer system also help make sure the Fed have enough treasuries on their balance sheet? Correct. In the past, Congress had limited the ability of the Fed from buying treasuries directly from the Treasury. The relationship between the, the Treasury and the Fed gets a little complicated. Basically, the primary dealers act as an important middleman between them. Whoa! Treasury auctions are so much cooler than I thought. I want to be an economist when I grow up. Doesn't everyone Johnny? <laughs>